Maximinus Thrax, Latin, Gaius Julius Verus Maximinus Augustus, c. 173 May 238, also known as Maximinus I, was Roman Emperor from 235 to 238. A Thraco Roman of low birth, Maximinus was the commander of the Legio IV Italica when Severus Alexander was assassinated by his own troops in 235. The Praetorian Guard then elected Maximinus Emperor. In the year 238, which came to be known as the Year of the Six Emperors, a senatorial revolt broke out, leading to the successive proclamation of Gordian I, Gordian II, Puppinus, Balbinus, and Gordian III as emperors in opposition to Maximinus. Maximinus advanced on Rome to put down the revolt, but was halted at Aquileia, where he was assassinated by disaffected elements of the Legio IV Parthica. Maximinus is described by several ancient sources, though none are contemporary except Herodian's Roman history. He was a so-called barracks emperor of the 3rd century, his rule is often considered to mark the beginning of the crisis of the 3rd century. Maximinus was the first emperor who hailed neither from the senatorial class nor from the equestrian class. <laughs> Rise to power Most likely Maximinus was of Thraco-Roman origin believed so by Herodian in his writings. According to the notoriously unreliable Augustan history Historia Augusta, he was born in Thrace or Mosia to a Gothic father and an Alanic mother, an Iranian people of the Scythian Sarmatian branch. However, the supposed parentage is a highly unlikely anachronism, as the Goths are known to have moved to Thrace from a different place of origin much later in history and their residence in the Danubian area is not otherwise attested until after Maximinus had lived his full life and died. British historian Ronald Syme, writing that the word Gothia should have sufficed for condemnation of the passage in the Augustan history, felt that the burden of evidence from Herodian, Syncellus and elsewhere pointed to Maximinus having been born in Mosia. The references to his Gothic ancestry might refer to a Thracian Gete origin the two populations were often confused by later writers, most notably by Jordanes in his Getica, as suggested by the paragraphs describing how he was singularly beloved by the Gete, moreover, as if he were one of themselves. And how he spoke, almost pure Thracian. His background was, in any case, that of a provincial of low birth, and was seen by the Senate as a barbarian, not even a true Roman, despite Caracalla's edict granting citizenship to all freeborn inhabitants of the empire. According to the Augustan history, he was a shepherd and bandit leader before joining the Imperial Roman army, causing historian Brent Shaw to comment that a man who would have been, in other circumstances a godfather, became emperor of Rome. In many ways, Maximinus was similar to the later Thraco-Roman emperors of the 3rd-5th century Licinius, Galerius, Aureolus, Leo the Thracian, etc., elevating themselves, via a military career, from the condition of a common soldier in one of the Roman legions to the foremost positions of political power. He joined the army during the reign of Septimius Severus, but did not rise to a powerful position until promoted by Alexander Severus. Maximinus was in command of Legio IV Italica, composed of recruits from Pannonia, who were angered by Alexander's payments to the Alemanni and his avoidance of war. The troops, among whom included the Legio XXII Primogenia, elected the stern Maximinus, killing young Alexander and his mother at Mogushicum modern Mainz. The Praetorian Guard acclaimed him emperor, and their choice was grudgingly confirmed by the Senate, who were displeased to have a peasant as emperor. His son Maximus became Caesar. Topic. Rule Topic. Consolidation of power Maximinus hated the nobility and was ruthless towards those he suspected of plotting against him. He began by eliminating the close advisors of Alexander. His suspicions may have been justified, two plots against Maximinus were foiled. The first was during a campaign across the Rhine, when a group of officers, supported by influential senators, plotted to destroy a bridge across the river, in order to strand Maximinus in hostile territory. They planned to elect Senator Magnus Emperor afterwards, but the conspiracy was discovered and the conspirators executed. The second plot involved Mesopotamian archers who were loyal to Alexander. 
They planned to elevate Cortinus, but their leader Macedo changed sides and murdered Cortinus instead, although this was not enough to save his own life. <laughs> Defense of frontiers The accession of Maximinus is commonly seen as the beginning of the crisis of the 3rd century also known as the military anarchy or the imperial crisis the commonly applied name for the crumbling and near collapse of the roman empire between 235 and 284 caused by three simultaneous crises external invasion internal civil war and economic collapse maximinus's first campaign was against the alemanni whom he defeated despite heavy roman casualties in a swamp in the agri decamates after the victory, Maximinus took the title Germanicus Maximus, raised his son Maximus to the rank of Caesar and Princeps Iuvantutus, and deified his late wife Paulina. Maximinus may have launched a second campaign deep into Germania, defeating a Germanic tribe beyond the Weser in the battle at the Harshorn. Securing the German frontier, at least for a while, Maximinus then set up a winter encampment at Sirmium in Pannonia, and from that supply base fought the Dacians and the Sarmatians during the winter of 235–236. Gordian I and Gordian II Early in 238, in the province of Africa, a treasury official's extortions through false judgments in corrupt courts against some local landowners ignited a full-scale revolt in the province. The landowners armed their clients and their agricultural workers and entered Thistris modern LDJEM, where they murdered the offending official and his bodyguards and proclaimed the aged governor of the province, Marcus Antonius Gordianus Sempronianus Gordian I, and his son, Gordian II, as co-emperors. The Senate in Rome switched allegiance, gave both Gordian and Gordian II the title of Augustus, and set about rousing the provinces in support of the pair. Maximinus, wintering at Sirmium, immediately assembled his army and advanced on Rome, the Pannonian legions leading the way. Meanwhile, in Africa, the revolt had not gone as planned. The province of Africa was bordered on the west by the province of Numidia, whose governor, Capilianus, nursed a long-standing grudge against the Gordians and controlled the only legionary unit three Augusta in the area. He marched on Carthage and easily overwhelmed the local militias defending the city. Gordian II was killed in the fighting and, on hearing this, Gordian I hanged himself with his belt. Puppinus, Balbinus, and Gordian III When the African revolt collapsed, the Senate found itself in great jeopardy. Having shown clear support for the Gordians, they could expect no clemency from Maximinus when he reached Rome. In this predicament, they remained determined to defy Maximinus and elected two of their number, Puppinus and Balbinus, as co-emperors. When the Roman mob heard that the Senate had selected two men from the patrician class, men whom the ordinary people held in no great regard, they protested, showering the imperial cortege with sticks and stones. A faction in Rome preferred Gordian's grandson, Gordian III, and there was severe street fighting. The co-emperors had no option but to compromise, and, sending for the grandson of the elder Gordian they appointed him Caesar. Defeat and death Maximinus marched on Rome, but Aquileia closed its gates against him. His troops became disaffected during the unexpected siege of the city, at which time they suffered from famine and disease. In May 238, soldiers of the two Parthica in his camp assassinated him, his son, and his chief ministers. Their heads were cut off, placed on poles, and carried to Rome by cavalrymen. Puppinus and Balbinus then became undisputed co emperors. However, they mistrusted each other, and ultimately both were murdered by the Praetorian Guard, making Gordian the third sole surviving emperor. <laughs> Politics Maximinus doubled the pay of soldiers, this act, along with virtually continuous warfare, required higher taxes. Tax collectors began to resort to violent methods and illegal confiscations, further alienating the governing class from everyone else. According to early church historian Eusebius of Caesarea, the imperial household of Maximinus's predecessor, Alexander, had contained many Christians. 
Eusebius states that, hating his predecessor's household, Maximinus ordered that the leaders of the churches should be put to death. According to Eusebius, this persecution of 235 sent Hippolytus of Rome and Pope Pontian into exile but other evidence suggests that the persecutions of 235 were local to the provinces where they occurred rather than happening under the direction of the emperor. Appearance Ancient sources, ranging from the unreliable Historia Augusta to accounts of Herodian, speak of Maximinus as a man of significantly greater size than his contemporaries. He is, moreover, depicted in ancient imagery as a man with a prominent brow, nose, and jaw, symptoms of acromegaly. His thumb was said to be so large that he wore his wife's bracelet as a ring for it. According to Historia Augusta, he was of such size, so Cordus reports, that men said he was 8 foot, 6 inches c. .6 meters in height. It is very likely however that this is one of the many exaggerations in the Historia Augusta, and is immediately suspect due to its citation of Cordus. One of the several fictitious authorities the work cites, although not going into the supposedly detailed portions of Historia Augusta, the historian Herodian, a contemporary of Maximinus, mentions him as a man of greater size, noting that, "...he was in any case a man of such frightening appearance and colossal size that there is no obvious comparison to be drawn with any of the best-trained Greek athletes or warrior elite of the barbarians." Some historians interpret the stories on Maximinus's unusual height as well as other information on his appearance, like excessive sweating and superhuman strength as popular stereotyped attributes which do no more than intentionally turn him into a stylized embodiment of the barbarian bandit or emphasize the admiration and aversion that the image of the soldier evoked in the civilian population. See also Aspasius of Rome, his secretary as emperor.